Hi, Bill Barber from Polygon here. In this video, we're going to look at how to properly use displacement textures from Polygon materials in Maya with V-Ray. Before we get started, let's take a look at the material we'll be using. It's Ground Asphalt Broken 001 and is easily one of my favorite ground textures here at Polygon. Um, it's brilliant for demonstrating this displacement, which is why I picked it. <laughs> um, I've already got the 4K version saved to my hard drive and I'll include a link um, below the video. As a note, uh, I would recommend getting the, the 4K version if you're going to be following along because with displacement you really do want as much detail from the texture as possible. So let's take a look at what it is we're going to be doing. You've probably heard of a bump map before which is used to artificially give the impression of height in a material. Well a displacement map is different. It is used to literally deform the object based on the values of the texture with the black areas being the deep crevices and the white areas being the peaks. It results in a far more realistic material. Okay, so let's take a look at how we uh, pull this effect off in Maya and V-Ray. So, first of all, I'm going to bring in our material. Now, I'll be using the material converter, which I've already covered in a previous video, um, which I'll, uh, I'll I'll link below this one. Um, but yeah, my materials are here, and it's ground asphalt broken 001. So I'll select that folder and load in the material. And then when we go to the hypershade, we should C, yeah, good, our ground material. Let me just close that. Um, I'm gonna hold down right mouse button and then go to graph network, just so we can see the material. Um, and I'll also click on this input output connections button to, to bring in the displacement shader as well. And yeah, that's all looking good. So the converter's done its job for us. Now all we need to do is click on the ground plane and hold down the right mouse button on the material and then assign it. Good. Now, we'll do a render at this point, and I'm willing to bet it won't look particularly great. <laughs> um, hence the fact we need this video. But I'll pause the recording while that's running. Okay, so yeah, not looking particularly great. Um, <laughs> so yeah, let's get to work on, uh, on fixing that. First, I'll click on the hypershade, and we're gonna adjust the tiling, because at the moment, we're a bit zoomed in on this texture. So let's click on the UV node at the beginning of the material. And then under repeat UV, we'll set that to about a value of four. Just so we've got uh, so we're quite a bit zoomed out from the texture. Or the texture's tiled more, I should say. Now, um, we have a few things to do. First of all, we need to add in some attributes here. Um, so if you click on the attributes uh, menu option, scroll down to V-Ray, Sorry, you need the plane selected. Attributes, V-Ray, and then we want displacement control. Um, and you can also add in, yeah, honestly that, that's pretty much enough, but we'll add in subdivision and also subdivision and displacement quality. So now we've got a bunch of different controls here that we can use. Um, yeah, <laughs> so let's start off by um, Let's increase the displacement amount to say two, okay? And see if that makes any difference to the render that we've got. Now I stopped that render earlier, uh, but yeah, um, as you can see, it's it's kind of made a difference. We've got kind of a big lump coming out here, <laughs> um, but not really, not really what we're looking for. So what we instead need to do is increase the amount of geometry that V-Ray has to work with, okay? So we can do that from here. Um, you can also do this from within the settings panel. If you don't want to add in all these additional attributes, you can just go to the settings and subdivision settings within V-Ray, um, but that just makes it a handy little a handy little part here. Um, and this will be uh, specific to this plane, yeah, this object, which is, which is also kind of handy. So already it's got override global settings, so it will forget what the the, the global settings uh, are and, and just pay attention to this and then you've got this max subdiv and edge length now what I'm going to do is whack this up to something insane like 256 it, it won't automatically do 256 subdivisions because that would be uh, that would not be good but what it allows us to do is now play with this edge length now this as you lower the edge length that that's um, going to increase the amount of subdivision basically it takes the 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 actual length in pixels of, a, of an edge uh, and, and subdivides based on that yeah so at the moment it will be 
it won't be particularly great, even though we've we, we've increased this subdiv. In fact, I'll, I'll, I'll demonstrate. Increasing the subdiv certainly helped. We can now see um, some displacement happening, and it's it's actually not looking too bad. If we were a bit more zoomed out, I'd be tempted to to leave those settings as as they are. But since we are so close, what I'm going to do is lower this edge length to a value of say two, um, and I think that will actually do us. Um, the displacement amount's a little bit too high, so let's change that to about 1.5. And what I will do is go into the common settings and I'm just going to up the resolution for what will be, I suppose, a final render here. And I think that will about do us. So let's see how this turns out. Yeah, I think that I think that might just be the uh, the sweet spot for this material. That's looking pretty good. Um, some of the sort of blurry uh, triangulated edges we were getting with this uh, set to four have now gone. Um, yeah, yeah, it's looking really good. And if you compare this, uh, I always like to do this uh, at the end. If I turn the displacement amount to zero, okay, and do a comparison render, um, the, the difference is absolute night and day. Right there, so so that's that's no displacement whatsoever. That's just our flat material, and and compared to what we what we've just managed to put together using a a few displacement settings, um, yeah, it's it makes such a difference. It's it's a step that's definitely worth spending a bit of time on um, on some materials. Certainly ones like this, it will uh, it will bring your materials to life. So in summary, we've taken a material from Polygon.com, brought it into Maya using our material converter added in some displacement attributes um, and played with the settings a little bit until we got the uh, the result that we were after and finally rendered it out with V-Ray.